All right, we've got some Striper, a uh, song called Sympathy, and this is a CBT lesson for Jason. Um, Jason, you're a huge Striper fan, man. There's no doubt about it. I just, in my phone, you're Jason Striper. That's just how I do it. Jason CBT Striper. So anyways, killer song, man. Like everything from Striper. Um, this, um, everything's subgrouped for you. You know the deal. You've had enough of these CBTs. You want to tune a half step down. Tuna, it's a type of fish. Um, but anyways, yeah, I wrote the, um, the way to tune a half step down. Tuna. Man, every time I say it, it's tuna. Tune a half step down. So D sharp, G sharp, C sharp, F sharp, A sharp, and D sharp. That's starting from string six, which is your top string. So everything is down a half step, which is not uncommon for a lot of, a lot of bands in the 80s. Like everything was half step down. Not all, but a lot. Um, did a basic EQ for you, the primary effects. Everything's notated. Um, it is four pages. The solo is um, in 25 subgroups. And um, a lot of techniques, man. Pages. See that? There's a lot of stuff, dude. So, anyways, let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, let's get this adjusted here. Actually, let's bring this down a little bit. How's that? And, um... So section one, uh, I got all the little things for you, man. There's a, a lot of times little things get left out with guitar teachers, and sometimes they're not big deals, but you know, why not? Why not, right? So it starts with the very beginning here. Have some distortion with a little delay, which you'll see on your tabs. I put the, the basic effects in the song. So um, around fret one, it's not like you go... It's more of the, a, a slide like that is just a feel thing. It's a metal thing. Um, not just metal, but you know. Go for the effect of the slide up to fret 17 approximately. Don't kill yourself if you go a little too far because you're not hanging out on these notes. You're going for the effect of this long ascending, descending slide. All right, so. Um, and that's going to lead us into the main rhythm, which is. So, um, in this first section, which is zero seconds to 27 seconds, um, it's played four times, fourth time, no star. We'll get to that in a second. Um, the next time around, there's tiny little things that are altered guitar ways, nothing major, so I just had you go back and play it the same way. I mean, very, very minor. Two guitar parts, you know, we got the Oz and we got Mike Sweet. So, um, hi Oz. Anyways, open A, 7D, not 70, but 7D, um, third finger. So, got kind of a Lynch vibe, man, really do. Speaking of, sweet lunch. Yeah, boy. So we have open A, seven, D, two times. Hit them together. And then the open A palm muted twice. Right back to the open seven. Another palm mute on the open A. And that's your first mini subgroup within section one. Then go to the fifth fret, D and G. Bar that with your first finger and hit those two strings together, then the open A string palm muted twice. And then go back to the chord and then an open A palm muted once. So and then back to the 5-5 DG twice. So that's your second mini subgroup within section one. So up to there. And you listen really close, you'll hear open A, palm muted down up, down up. And that's one of the parts that's not consistent in some of the other times that they go through this part. Like sometimes it's just down up. So, not a biggie. So, and then the old flat five, I call the Lynch chord, 4D, 5G. Hit those, put a, a quick vibrato, or you don't have much time type vibrato. 
And then um, hit it again, no vibrato. Two open A's palm muted, back to the chord. One open A palm mute. And that's the third mini subgroup within section one, so. I'm missing the beat. Yeah. And then the next one is almost the same thing, but we're flatting the root now. It's just a power chord. So 3D, 5G. And when you get to this part, this is the last of the little mini subgroups, the fourth one. And you'll go like this. You'll go power chord, two open A's palm muted. Power chord, one open A palm muted. Power chord, slide a whole step sharp up to 5-7, and then a quick down up. It's a 16th note, no palm mute off the open A. Set all that to play this. And by the way, man, the guitar tone is smoking. Man, it's killer. Striper's tone is always awesome, man. I love it. So we have. Then you go back. The second time you play it the same way. Third time play it the same way. Fourth time I put no star, which means the 16th note down up on the open A. Okay, you just won't throw that in. And that's going to lead us into this section two, which is 28 seconds to 33 seconds. And I listened close on this. There's some whammy stuff with these power chords. Really cool that they thought they'd do this. It goes. Yeah. So what you'll do, 8A, 10D, you're going to hit those two strings together. And then after that, there's a rest after each one. You're going to whammy a quick down up. Don't pull the bar up past the notes. Just It's a swoop. You're going to go. So, one, two, three, four. Okay? Just one well, that sounded out of tune. Nope. Okay, so after that. And then strum the chord again. But this time, chord again. Sounds like a dog or a, or a sweater. All right, so you're gonna go. You're gonna slide the eighth fret on the A a half step flat to seven. So it's like a flatted power chord. You're going. All right, so I would suggest using the pinky, particularly on this power chord. I usually do anyways. Um, Seems like in the early days with me, a lot of times I'd use my third finger. I don't know if it's because someone told me, yeah, because you want to work on the stretch and this and that. And that's all cool. But after you've been playing for a while, you kind of pick and choose where you want to use your pinky. In this place, in this case, it works to your advantage because of this flatted power chord. So when you slide, you should still hear that 10th fret D ringing. And then, then strum it. And then there's a fret hand really quick, you can barely hear it. It's more of a feel thing, but it goes. Just kind of mute over the, the strings here with these fingers. Don't push down hard. And go down up. Basically A and D. If you hit the G or the E with it, no biggie. It's not. It's just a. Don't overanalyze that part, but they're doing it. And it's a good idea to do it over the chord that's coming up, right? So. Or in route to the chord. Timing. 5A, 7D. Now when you get there, you'll, you'll hit the chord, but bar, because you're going to need to go 5-5 five, five AD, you're going to hit those two and do a quick hammer onto the 7th fret D. It's kind of like Paranoid from Sabbath, except they play that up here. But you'll go um, three times of that. So you have... First, I thought that was a whammy thing, but yeah, they're hammering that, so. And then pick the fifth fret A, you're already there. Slide it to three. Do a pinch harmonic on that with a vibrato. So. Okay, then, um. That's it for that part, 28 to 33 seconds. 
Um, then you're back to the beginning, minus the you know the whole intro slide, but from the open A seven D. <laughs> Even on the end, I want them to like something like that. But just play those the same way. Um, that's going to go three times. Then you go to section two. That's the part we just discussed and went over. Um, then we move into section one, one time, which was this part. Now, on, but this time, no star. Um, wait, we talked about that earlier. Yeah, which takes off the 16th notes, which is uh, at the end of it. No, nope, don't sweat it. So nothing's changed, right? Then, this little interlude chord, it's a D, and you want to go 2G with your first finger, 3B with your third finger. Take your thumb, try to mute this low E if you can. It's a good habit to get into. Make sure it's not pushing down the note, but just muting it. And then the angle of your third finger should be muting that high E as well. Um, if you do that, it allows you to be able to hit all the strings and uh, get a really fat, big sound in your face. And it's just, uh, you let it ring and then just a consistent, kind of like a vibrato you do here. But done with the whammy bar as well. And another thing cool I noticed that Mike and Oz do, and me and Armando used to do this in my band The Velma Fix, years ago is and it's little things like one guitar player maybe be doing this and the other one goes up here or, um, same chord different frets gives you different tonality because we're dealing with a different string thickness so it's cool that striper you know Mike and Oz are super tight like that you can tell it's ball and glove man with those guys um, listen to their solos and the harmonies and just how things are worked out it's beautiful Okay, so after that, there's a, go up to fret 15, do a quick slide um, to lead into section 3, which is the chorus, and that'll go. And there's two guitars, so I can hear, um, for example, let me play it first. Sure. So. Oh. There's this thing um, on the C, on that, and I can hear one track where it's like, like which is cool, man. That's the beauty of studio, and it's also the beauty of two guitar players. But I had to go with one, so I picked that one. It's the more consistent part. But uh, if you want to experiment with it, it's 3A, muted D, open G, 3B in place of the so let's jump in open a second fret d and g just bar that with your first finger um try to mute the b string and the high e just because you get too many notes in some of these parts particularly with when you're doing a rock metal song it can get too pretty unless it's a ballad you know so um it's the less is more concept on your notes you're gonna go down 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 up i'm also muting the low e with my thumb because you know, you only got that much distance between the strings, and um, it's better to know that you could just go ahead and hit it and have it muted here. That this sound, you're not going to hear that compared to the notes that are true that are cutting through. So then go 2A, 5D. It's a quick change. I couldn't tell if it was a single or the flatted power chord, but not a biggie. Um, go down on that. 2 5 AD thing is down 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 up down then close the gap in other words take the root and make it a regular power chord by moving it a half step sharp to the third fret a fifth fret D so let's play that up down down up down up when I'm playing that power chord through there I'm also muting underneath the low E um, Guitar players that have been playing for a while, those are things you may notice, fingers seeming like, why is it doing that? Um, also, you may see the middle finger a lot of times with power chords up here. It's not pushing the fret down, it's serving as a mute. I'm doing two mutes here just to secure everything, but it's a habit now. It's like, I know that I can do it with one, but you know, this guy comes down usually with it. No biggie. <laughs> Go up to the, and by the way, that's where I'm saying you can do the. 
All right, um, 3E, 5A, and go down, 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 down. That last down, I'm hearing a palm mute. It's either Oz or Mike, and the other one's not doing a palm mute. So you have And move that a whole step to 1E, 3A. Strum it once, rest. And then two times. Reminds me of that Jet song. Anyways, you'll end up going one, two, three. Lift your first finger off so it's open three. Right back down to the power chord one, three. And then lift it off again. And then go up to three, E, five, A. So. Okay, um, that's it for page one. Uh, also, what was I gonna tell you about that, man? Um, that's two times, a minute 10 to a minute 22. We go over to page two here, and um, we start with this. That D chord that I was showing you earlier, 2G, 3B, um, strum that. Uh, there's one guitar's letting the chord ring, the other one's doing a natural harmonic. Fret five on the G, and the trick to this is push the bar down just a little bit, well, a little more than a little bit, and hit a natural harmonic fifth fret G right above the silver fret bar. Pick. I'm not pushing. I'm just lightly putting pressure. Pick. Bring the bar up to pitch. Don't go past the pitch, and then drop it down. Dive bomb. All right. Um, then section one two times, second time no star. Section two one time, section one no star one. That'll all make sense in your tabs, trust me. Then we're gonna go to this part, it's 5A, 7D, this is a two second part, you'll go. It cuts into section one basically with this, uh, with this. Just a little build up you'll hear. And um, that's gonna lead into section three, which is the chorus does that four times. But anyways, the 5A, 7D, you'll strum the power chord. Oh, actually, you'll go. Not too tough, man. So, and then palm mute the fifth fret off the A three times. And then lift the palm mute off and hit the power chord twice. And then fret 12, slide down. Don't overanalyze the slide where you go, just get up here and slide it down. All right, the solo comes in. I can see this is gonna be a two-part video. Um, five E on the high E and seven on the high E. No, I'm sorry, three E, five E. It's a bunch of fast trills. In other words, a pick with a bunch of hammer pulls. Okay, um, it's very, very hard to count, so you're gonna to wanna to try to get the feel of this. This finger comes down, I believe, four times. And then uh, from there you'll move the, the same concept, that's subgroup one. This guitar solo is from 226 to 305 in the song. Um, and you have a bunch of subgroups. Um, a bunch of them are the same right here. Uh, subgroup two is 5-7, same thing. Um, then you move up to 7-8. So, and then go to 8-10, just keep this concept going, he's just taking the scale. And then go to 10, 12, um, 12, 13, 13, 15, 15, 17. Now, when you get up to 15 and 17, um, you do want to be aware of how long you do it. It's two times of pick, hammer, pull, hammer. And probably back to that 15. I need to fix that in the tabs. Or, or maybe not. Right, there we go. Two times. And then move it to 17 and 19 and do the same thing. And we better go to part dose.